Hello everyone, welcome to the final Nintendo 64 performance upgrade video before I release today. Right now we're going to load into the Gloopin Core. Low content, I'm doing dummy folder method right now. We're going to load a game that is prone to crashes with the Gloopin Core. And there are tremendous differences between Gloopin and Moopin, which I'll go over in this video. We're going to load Star Fox 64 as our test subject here. Gloopin. And we're here. Many people thought that these crashes were due to overheating issues with the mini systems, but that is not the case. There's an entirely different reason why the crashes happen. And I'm going to go into this and show you how to bypass the crashes today. And I have successfully been able to beat Star Fox, Mario Kart, and multiple other games that are prone to crashes using Gloopin with the bypass method. So we're going to get to the crash point, and I'm going to show you how to bypass it. And a cardinal rule with the update is uh, I would first try loading the game in the Moopin core, and if Moopin runs the game fine, stick with it. Because once the game slows to a crawl, it is less likely to crash to the main user interface. You have more time to react to trying to fix the crash. You just have to have a little bit better timing when playing the Gloopin core to bypass the crashes. And you'll be able to recognize when a crash is about to happen and react to it in time. I've done it multiple, multiple times over the last several days. Open the wing. But yes, I've been able to fully play many games and get past the crash point. But I'll explain why the crashes happen. And I give tremendous personal thanks to Pillow Debt for helping out with some of the test perimeters and helping solve some of the crashes. So let's get to that point. And I've always been a fan of Star Fox from Super Nintendo to the Nintendo 64 version, which, by the way, I imported earlier because I was so impatient and really, really wanted to play it, and I paid a good $30, $40 extra just to get it early. And of course, they did a tremendous job putting it on um, 3DS. And of course, I also played the GameCube version. But again, I'm running the, running the Gloopin' Core right now. But I would first recommend playing the game in Moopin' and seeing how the game runs due to the, the factor, the differential factor of the audio and video will plug in. Some games may run better on Moopin' than on Gloopin'. You'll quickly know which ones are which. An example of this is GoldenEye. It runs better on Gloopin' than it does on Moopin'. It's just the way it is. Game never gets old. We're entering Quinaria City now. But there's gonna be a little bit of magic and a technical explanation about why the crashes and freezes happen with these two different cores. Everybody stay alert! Now it'll be released on the update sometime today. I've always loved this type of targeting system for shmups where you lock on and release. I mean, many games have used it over the years, but I've been a fan of them. Some of the title shoot 'em up games, arcade shoot 'em up games have used this. Even the Afterburner Climax has used that targeting system. Of course, Panzer Dragon 1 and 2. And Saga. So we're nearing the boss, and we're going to see that choke point where this game would typically freeze on Gloopin, but we're not going to let that be an issue today. I'm going to get right past it and continue on. playing very nice and smooth and again the games that typically run the best on these cores are the first party games and uh, don't expect miracles just like with the PPSS PP performance upgrade if you're trying to run a game like Paper Mario or Conquer's Bad for a Day games like that that really didn't run to begin with you're not going to really be able to play them out here it's just how it is 
even on Project 64 on PC, Paper Mario has had issues over the years too, depending on which plugins you use. And we have very, very less control over the plugin system on here, it's just how it is. If it were an Android architecture, it'd be quite a bit different. We'd be running Dreamcast and DS right now, but it's a different infrastructure here, and we don't have that luxury. Okay, we're about to get to the freeze point in the game. But we're not going to let that hold us back. We're going to continue right on through. Keep on trucking. We're heading out. All the common complaint here is that when you get to the over the galaxy map, the game would freeze. You're becoming more like your father. Falco's ship is under maintenance. So we're going to do something very special here and get into a little bit of a more technical thing here. And it's very good to be able to recognize these slowdowns and freezes. Right here is about where it would freeze. Just watch. I went into the retro arc options as it was starting to slow down to a crawl. And depending on how quick you do it, you'll have better time to react in the menus here. I'm able to move it fast since I did it in time. But if you do it a little bit slower and don't react to it fast enough, you're going to have slower menu crawl. But it'll still work. You have, once you get into retro arc options, you have time to do it. But right now we're going to go into the settings video. What people don't realize is there's a constant battle to synchronize the audio and video together to the refresh rate of the device that you're trying to interact with. But what we're going to do here is actually force the refresh rate. What would typically happen is as you're starting to slow down and freeze, this refresh rate would slow down and it would say something like 2 or 12, etc. But we're going to force the RGB and force the refresh rate to the device. And we're going to wait a few seconds for it to do it. And then this NA is going to pick up slack right there. And then we're going to simply go back to quick menu and resume. Like so. And we made it right past the freeze point. Typically, the game would slow down to a crawl, freeze, and crash to the main user interface right there. But we're past it by doing that little <laughs> refresh rate force right there that I showed you. Typically, people playing the Gloopin' Core would get approximately 20 minutes of gameplay before they have a slow down, freeze, or crash. But you could do a preemptive strike and just go into settings, and you could do it as it's starting to do it, or you could do it a little bit of a preemptive strike. One thing I would not recommend doing is uh, having it saved as a default. You want to have it off when you initially run the core. Only turn it on and off and on and off as you're trying to fix the crashes as they transpire. But I'm going to force it off again. Do a little bit of a, a preemptive strike there. And there we go. Back in action. So anytime you start to get a free slowdown or crash, quickly get into your retro arc options and force and unforce that refresh rate and that's how you bypass the crashes but we're playing the game and I've made it all the way through this game as well as Mario Kart and a few other games no problems whatsoever I just get into retro quick enough to bypass the crash now I'm gonna load another game here again it's a, a synchronous nature of the audio and video trying to basically interact with the refresh rate so just remember that option I'll show you it one more time as I do another video here another game test I'm gonna go into GoldenEye this is another thing that has been requested of me typically I would load it and move in first and then I would go into Gloopin as my secondary backup it runs a little bit slower due to the the plugins for audio and video on Moopin so I'm gonna load it in Gloopin instead just try it out in Moopin first And Moopin is less likely to crash, it'll freeze and slow down to a crawl, but you could get into the retro arc options and, and change that little force RGB. But Gloopin will always crash to the main user interface if you don't stop it in time. And they do use different plugin setups, so it runs better on this core, Gloopin, right here.
And one of the other complaints is the control scheme for some of the first person shooter games and doing emulation for over 20 years. It's always been an issue when going from a game like F-Zero to GoldenEye, etc. It's much more difficult to use the control scheme as a universal control scheme between two different types of games. But I set up something here to make things a little bit easier. If I try moving forward, I'm looking up and down. That's not going to work. So I'm going to go into, and this is going to be in the update today, of course. Quick menu, controls, load remap file. Here we have Nintendo 64 first person shooter mode and Nintendo 64 standard mode. I'm simply going to go in here and load this remap file. Now we're going to resume and play Goldeneye. With a more intuitive control scheme where I'm moving forward and back and not looking up and down with the camera. And we're going to test out the aiming scheme. And we're good to go. So I can play this game and uh, be fine until it slows down to a crawl or starts to freeze. And simply go into RetroArch Options. Again. And you just have to have decent timing to be able to get in there the moment you know it's about to freeze. I mean, you're going to know. It happens It happens, and you would recognize it after it happens a time or two. Video. And I'm going to force it on yet again. RGB on. Wait for it to refresh right to sync yet again. And I would recommend turning it off before you exit the core. You don't want to have it saved because some games will not load when you have it on. But you can turn it on and off generally for most games, 90% of games, as you're already in the game. So we're good here. I've been playing for three plus hours without any true crash or freeze to shut the system down. I've been able to stay in the game just by doing the force RGB off and on as needed. But yes, that's all you have to do to continue to play the game. Just force the RGB on and off. We're gonna do one more test example here and I'll get this posted today. I'm gonna load uh, another game. Let's see what else we have to load here. How about uh, the Fantastic Sin and Punishment? We're going to load it with Moopin first. Again, test the game out with Moopin, and if it works with Moopin, stick with it. Go to Gloopin as your backup core. I'm loving both cores, and they both do their job here. Notice how I was unable to load the game because I had that sync on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to do it again. That's what I was talking about. If you have the Force RGB on, it's not going to load the game. So I'm going to load the core. Moop in. Then I'm going to go into settings. Video. You want to make sure this is off. I'm going to load Sin and Punishment with Moopin. Then I went into the options right away. Notice that Force Disables Off. You want to make sure it's off and of course, if you end up messing up, you can uninstall and reinstall RetroArch, or you can just load another game as a little dummy bypass and make sure it's off, but have this off before you load a game. Only turn it off and on while you're already in-game, but it's off right now. And we're playing the fantastic Sin and Punishment game. They did a tremendous Wii variant of this. I love the Wii version. And Treasure made this game, of course. Another great shmup game. And again, if I start slowing down to a crawl or freeze, then I would just go into the settings and force that RGB on.
But I'd, I'd have to admit, some of these crashes and freezes were a little bit annoying at first, but uh, bypassing them has been tr tremendously refreshing. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but you're going to be able to play more games than you've ever played before with this new setup. And if you're looking to play Sin and Punishment again, the name of the game here, just so you can see it. Because it's not simply going to be called Sin and Punishment if you try finding it. It's called Sumi Tubatsu Hoshi no Keshusha. So just remember that. Sumi Tubatsu. But anyways, that's the video, and I'll be releasing this today. That's how you bypass the, the crashes and freezes.